Hello, HBSers. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about the Glomerulus and Bowman's Capsule, and I'm going to do a demo with these different liquids. So get ready to learn about the first step of how we make urine. Let's start by drawing a Glomerulus. So draw along with me. You have the blood vessel coming in, and then you just have this tangle, and then you have the blood vessel coming out. We're going to label each part, so make sure to add an arrow to show the direction. This is coming to the glomerulus, so this is called the afferent arteriole. So in uh, physiology, afferent means it runs towards something, and efferent means it runs away. The afferent arteriole is coming in, and the efferent arteriole is leaving. When we learned about the brain and the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, we learned that sensory nerves are afferent because they run to the brain. And we learned that motor neurons are efferent because they run away from the brain. So our afferent arterioles run to the glomerulus and our efferent arterioles run away from the glomerulus. This is the glomerulus. It's a tangle of blood vessels, specifically arterioles, and they have very thin walls so that materials can diffuse through them. Now draw yourself a little cup-shaped structure and color it yellow. This is Bowman's capsule. The glomerulus sits down in the Bowman's capsule, and the materials that are being filtered out of the blood from the glomerulus are passing into Bowman's capsule. So I'm going to draw arrows showing that the materials are coming from the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. This is the site of filtration of a nephron within the kidney. So this is in the cortex of the kidney, and what's happening is materials, especially water, but also some urea, waste, electrolytes, glucose, some medications, all of those things are being filtered out of the blood at the glomerulus and going into Bowman's capsule. Once they go into Bowman's capsule, they um, become part of what's called the filtrate. That's why I've colored it yellow, because the filtrate is basically like pre-urine. It's not yet urine. It needs to get a lot more concentrated. Most of what goes in is not going to come out as urine. It's going to be reabsorbed, but this is sort of pre-urine. Okay, next up I have some containers for you right here in my kitchen. These contain different amounts of liquid. And I want you to think about which one might represent what. So I have five different things. They are not correctly labeled right now. One of these represents the amount of blood passing through the kidneys per minute. One of them represents the amount of urine that the bladder can hold on average. One of them represents the amount of urine we make every day if we're healthy and hydrated. One of them represents the amount of urine we make per minute. And one of them represents the amount of filtrate we produce per minute by a healthy kidney. Think about which one might represent which, and then I'll show you. I'm going to start with my biggest volume. This is how much pee I made yesterday. It's not my literal pee, but approximately 1,500 milliliters or one and a half liters is how much urine a healthy person should make in one day. This next one I think might sort of blow your mind. It blows my mind. This is how much blood filters through the kidneys every minute. So how much is passing through the kidneys being cleaned every minute? And this is about 1200 milliliters. So think about that every minute, all day long, every day, Actually, all of the blood in your body passes through your kidneys about 40 times every single day. Here's the next one. This is about 400 milliliters. It's a little less than two cups. This is the amount of pee that the typical bladder can hold before we really need to go. So this is a pretty full bladder. Although when I researched, it said we could hold about twice as much at night. That's definitely not the case with me, but maybe you can. So somewhere around 400 milliliters, and my students, this one's not on your handout, I just thought it was cool. Compare that to the 1,500 we make a day. That means most of us are gonna pee four times a day. I pee way more than that, so maybe my bladder holds less or I make a lot more pee. Now I'm gonna go to my smallest amount. I did a little quarter teaspoon. 
just a milliliter. This is about how much pee we make every minute. So every minute our kidneys are making pee just a tiny bit and it's just dripping from the renal pelvis down the ureters into our bladder. If we didn't have a bladder to store it, we would have to pee about every 10 to 15 seconds. Kind of like when you have a UTI, it feels that way. Finally, I have my last amount. This is about 125 milliliters. And this is the amount of filtrate our kidneys make per minute. So if we have a healthy kidney, this is basically how much liquid is passing from the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule every minute. But we're not making this much pee per minute. I showed you how much pee we're making per minute. It's way less. And that's because most of this filtrate is not gonna become pee. It should be way lighter. Most of it is gonna go right back into the blood and it'll just go through the cycle again. So let's think about why we pee. Why do our kidneys do what they do? Basically, there's two main reasons. We need to get rid of our excess fluid we have to be drinking, but we have to get rid of the extra. And we have to balance our electrolytes. So if we have too much sodium or chloride ions in our blood, it can be dangerous. And if we have too little, it's dangerous. So our kidneys are constantly balancing all of this. That's the main job of our kidneys and the main reason why we make urine. There are a couple things, though, that never should come from the glomerulus into Bowman's capsule. They should never leave the blood in the first place. <clears throat> the most important things are red blood cells. If those are coming out, we have a problem. And the other huge thing is protein. Those two things just stay in the blood. They're not filtered out at all. 100% should stay with us. There's another thing that should be completely reabsorbed. So it does get filtered out. It does go into the filtrate, but then we reabsorb every bit of it because it is precious, and that is glucose. So you should not have sugar coming out in your urine. If you do, it's a sign of diabetes or kidney failure because our bodies consider glucose to be a precious resource. So that should stay in our blood, gets reabsorbed completely. And there are two other things that are actually mostly reabsorbed. The vast majority of these does stay in our blood and that includes our salts, our electrolytes. Those mostly stay in our blood, just a small percent comes out, and water. Most of what goes through into Bowman's capsule is going to get reabsorbed right back into our blood so we don't dry out like a raisin. There are several things that come out when we pee, things that we secrete. And I would say there are three big things that I want to focus on. So we do secrete water. Obviously, urine is liquid. Water makes up 95% or more of pee. However, we still reabsorb almost all of the water, but what does come out is mostly water. The next thing is salts. So these are electrolytes. These are things like sodium and chloride. Technically chloride is not a salt, but it is an ion that makes up salt. These make up less than 5% of our urine. So they're dissolved in our urine, but we keep most of the ions in our blood. The last one is urea. Urea is also known as cellular waste. This is the stuff that we really, really, really have to get rid of. It makes up less than 5% of our urine, but 100% of it should be secreted because this stuff is toxic and we cannot have it in us. So when someone's undergoing dialysis, the biggest reason is to keep them from being poisoned by their urea but also they're gonna build up an excess of water and salts if they don't have dialysis. The final thing though that I wanna mention is medications do come out. So the reason why if you have a headache you have to keep taking ibuprofen is that does get filtered out through our kidneys. And if you're taking lots of medication, it can be hard on your kidneys to do all that filtering. Hope that helps you guys understand the glomerulus and Bowman's capsule which I'm now showing here. In my next video, I will demonstrate the nephron, the origami organelles nephron, and show you specifically how each thing gets filtered out and then where and how it gets reabsorbed if it does. Thanks for watching, have a good one.